Hey everyone, Shini here. Welcome back to my channel. This is the part three of our Senior Automation Engineer interview question series. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon to get notifications. So let's get on to today's topic. So this is going to be part three. And in the previous part, we have looked at the Java theoretical questions. Okay. And today we are going to focus on the Java coding interview questions. Where can you find the important coding interview questions? How can you practice for it? What are the areas you need to prepare, right? In terms of Java coding interviews. So I'm going to guide on all of that. And this is based on all of my practical experience, which I have basically taken a lot of interviews across multiple companies I've worked so far. And I've been an interviewee myself who have, you know, tried to get job in multiple companies. So I know about both as a candidate, as the interviewer, I've got loads of experience in the same. So I'm going to share all of that with you all today. So this is going to be the part four, part three is basically part four, uh, which I'm going to talk about today is the practical coding questions. And you can get this from Elite Code and Geeks for Geeks. So these are two popular websites which the interviewers today are using to basically ask questions to the candidates. So some of you all already know about it and some of you all may not be aware of this, but this is very important for you all to be aware and which all questions to expect in the interview, what complexity of questions. We are going to discuss all of that in today's topic. So for interview questions, which are for Java coding, you can expect simple and medium interview questions. And since we are talking about for senior automation engineer, you don't have to worry about any complexity beyond medium. It will be till maximum medium. And this also has I would say 40% chance. It will be mostly simple. So they just want to check that are you technically sound enough to able to solve a coding question if given on any particular topic. So that's what the interviewer wants to find out. And that will be mostly on strings and arrays. And sometimes on collections also. So they will try to give you a question which will be making use of collections. It could be hash map. It could be queue. Okay, it could be list, it could be set. It depends upon what kind of collection may be required in that example. And they will try to test your uh, you know, knowledge on that. So I'm going to give you all some important questions which have been personally my favorite when I have also asked the questions to the candidates. So I'll give all of that in today's session. So stay tuned to the end of this video. This is going to be very helpful if you're going to prepare for an interview for any company, be it a service-based or product-based. So do watch the video till the end. You'll be getting a lot of useful insights. I'm sure of that. Okay. So first thing is that you have to go to this particular website called leadcode.com. Okay. And you can register for it and it is free. Okay. Uh, you don't have to sign in for premium. You will be able to view all the questions for sure without even, you know, signing up for premium account. So if you want to look at entire details, it is asking you to log in. So for now, I'm just giving you this URL. And I'm going to explain what all sections are there in this particular one, right? So you can see here that we would be having arrays and string, right? These are the two popular data structures in Java. Okay. And these data structures are so important that we can create any logic for any particular problem, problem using this array and string data structure. So this is just the conceptual part which they have given in this article, but we want to look at the problems. So yeah, let's look at this one. If you see here, arrays and strings stop interview questions from lead code. Again, they're asking to sign in. And this has been the recent most thing actually that they are asking to register. But I'll give all of these URLs to you all. And if you see, there is also a discussion section in lead code where they discuss on what all different types of questions are asked. So example, you see someone has anonymously said that they have been asked these different types of questions on different, different areas. So example, if you see these are basically for parentheses, then you are having some questions for substring. Then you're having some questions on string and these are very, very important. So let me try to zoom in a bit and try to tell you all, so see, there's isomorphic strings. This is an easy complexity, right? Then there is an anagram. Again, this is easy. So all these things, except for hard, you can go about and you can try it on your own. Let's see if you can click on this one link and see if there is any solution given to this problem. 
or else you will have to practice it and let me know if you want me to give you any solution for any particular problem. So I'm just opening one of the link from that. So this is the question. They've given the question. So you will have to understand the example and you will have to basically solve it in this right hand side. You'll have to write your code and you'll have to submit your answer. If you see here, there is this method given to you isomorphic. So you need to understand the problem statement and you need to give your logic inside this particular one. They have taken care of the main method and the other things supported content inside this particular one. You don't have to worry. You just have to select the type of language. So if I select from here, this drop down Java. So this is going to completely transform this into a Java code, right? We just have to give the code for the isomorphic method, right? So this is how they have given. You have given the problem statement, like given two strings, S and T determine if they are isomorphic. And two strings are said to be isomorphic if the characters in S can be replaced to get T. So let's look at an example. All the occurrences of a character must be replaced with another character while preserving the order of characters. No two characters may map to the same character, but a character may map to itself. So we could not understand much, I'm pretty sure. So let's look at the example. So we have egg here and we have add. Two methods, two variables are there, S and T. These strings can be made identical if I make G as D, right? So I've just made two changes here. G is replaced by D and E is replaced by A, right? So G is replaced by D and E is replaced by A. Now, now, look, now let's look at the problem statement. Two strings are isomorphic if the characters in S, that is the first string, can be replaced to get Second string. Now it makes sense, right? So all the occurrences of a character must be replaced with another character while preserving the order of character. So we have not changed the order. We did not change this G to come in the front or at the first place, right? We simply have changed G to D and E to A. And then what's the next part? No two characters may map to the same character, but a character may map to itself. That what they're trying to say is, that you can't have E replaced by A as well as by D. You can have it replaced by only one. So that's what we have done here, right? So they've given examples. Now what we have to do is, we have to meet all these different constraints which they have given here. We have to ensure that it is satisfying all the different test cases, whatever examples are given, and whatever you can think of multiple permutations and combinations, and ensure that all the test cases basically are getting passed. When you submit the solution, you will be able to find out how many test cases got passed and you'll get some points also. So this is really interesting and you'll really improve your coding skills. Likewise, you can try to solve the simple and the easy and the medium questions. So similarly, we have for palindromic string. These are very important questions. Then there is sorting, right? And then you are having some questions here on the odd number, even number, etc. So these are some questions on the string pattern, okay? Now let's look at some other questions on the array. So we have another article, which is on the top interview questions, which is for easy category for arrays. Again, you will have to log in, but there is this all the list available. If you see array, string, etc., These are all the different data structures in Java, linked list, sorting, searching. So you can go for four categories, arrays, strings, sorting, searching, not even searching. I would say just go for sorting problems. And the fourth category, which I have already mentioned to you all is collections. If you are able to solve the problems on these four categories, I think it is more than enough. So I'm going to mention that here. Strings, arrays, collections. Just sorting for strings and arrays. And another thing which I have seen, uh, the it's like very basic question which the college level students will be able to solve for sure is the patterns like example diamond pattern etc etc now it is some interviews are asking it some interviews are skipping it but it's better to practice it i would say and i would say some on mathematical problems very simple ones not too much difficult for example how do you know or how do you determine if a number is an armstrong number uh, see, prime number is too easy. Okay. Even Fibonacci series or factorial of a number, these are too straightforward, I would say. 
So yeah, palindromic strings. That is not a mathematical, but I'm just saying that these kind of questions can come. So I would say in string, anagram, palindromic. Yeah, so Armstrong number is something like example 153, right? So if you try to sum up the cubes, so one cube plus five cube and three cube, like individual digits, if you try to sum up the cubes, it should give you the same number, which is 153. That is an Armstrong number, right? So some mathematical problems also you can expect, they can ask you to solve during the interview. So these kind of questions is what is generally asked in the Java practical coding interview questions round. So we have so far seen for lead code and I'm going to share this word document. I'm going to upload this into GitHub. And for now, what I'll do is I'll just simply put all these hyperlinks inside this particular document so that this becomes a one point of reference for you all, right? And you can please register onto this lead code website. It's really useful. So I'm going to put all these important links. And do let me know if you need me to give any solution for a particular problem. So this we have just discussed and then we have for array. Okay. Yeah. Now let's look at the other website, which is important one. That is the Geeks for Geeks. So Geeks for Geeks also has a lot of coding questions and it is also having a lot of different tutorials on different concepts like arrays, data structures, strings, etc. cetera. Uh, let's look at these top 50 array coding problems for interviews. Okay, and it is updated recently, if you see 7th August, right? So it is really up to date. And let's look at the level one problems which are maybe asked during the interview. So this is one of my favorite, find the minimum and maximum element in an array, and which you can expect definitely in an interview. So I'll tell about the popular questions for arrays as well here. This one I've found they often asking during the interview. So I'm going to copy this problem here. Just a minute. Yeah, so I've pasted this question here and I'm going to put the parent link as well here for the top 50 array coding problems so that you all can look at that as well. And of that, this is an important question, which I have mentioned here. And apart from that, let me look at the other ones. Yeah, this is also important, sub array with the given sum, okay? So this kind of questions are a little trickier for us to understand as well. But once you understand it, it's very easy. But these two questions is what I've seen they are asking much multiple times. Let me look at the level two. Find duplicates in an array is an important question. And I think we are okay, required to read more. Let's look at it. Find the first repeating in an array. Yeah, this is first non-repeating. Yeah, not this one. This one is more important. First non-repeating element in a given array. So these questions generally interviews ask more and find duplicates in an array. Yeah, I think these ones, if you prepare first, that should be really great. You'll be able to prepare for your next round. Okay, and you, if you get time, you can go across the other coding problems for arrays. So let's look at in Geeks for Geeks, any other types of problems which you can have. So practice for coding any interview. Yeah, I mean, see, that's what I've mentioned, right? You have mathematical section, you have strings, you have collection. There are so many different categories which are available. Uh, but this particular article you can go through and I can guide you all in this particular article, which one to go through. So I'm going to give both these hyperlinks to you all and let me guide you all what you can go through. Yeah, let's click on this. See, mathematical ones, yeah. As I mentioned, printing the pattern is important. Okay, so I'm going to give all these questions to you all, don't worry. So I'm just going to write here, as per my experience, these ones, if you prepare, you should be able to crack your interviews. So print the pattern. As I had mentioned, Armstrong number. I'm just giving all the important ones to y'all. Okay. The reversing digits is very important. Then what else we have? Prime number and all, I don't think they will ask because it's like mostly during college. But yeah, pair of prime numbers is something uh, 
variety of the question so you can expect this kind of question may be asked because it is not straightforward you will have to do something on that yeah i think these should be enough for mathematical and let's look at arrays okay let's look at strings let's look at arrays we have looked at arrays already but let's look at some other types now yeah, i think these should be enough they have not given for collections but let's look at the strings and arrays Okay, I think there is some problem. Okay. Yeah, 50 string coding problems for interview. So let's look at this as well. And I'll give all these links to you all in this document. So this document will serve like a one point of reference for you all to prepare for any coding interview question, be it for string, array, mathematical problems. That is why I'm trying to put all these hyperlinks over here so that you all can prepare for it. And this is for strings. Yeah, I've given all the links now. Yeah, so let's continue on this particular hyperlink, whatever they have discussed. Okay, let me just look at this link now. Yeah, so for strings, they've given reverse words in a given string. Yeah, this is a common question which you can expect during the interview. So I'm just going to give a title here reverse words in a string. Isomorphic strings is also important. This is very important. Uh, check if two strings are anagrams or not. Okay. Very commonly asked question in strings is anagram. Check, check if a string is written by two places. No, I don't think they will go in this much detail. And the largest word in a dictionary, find and replace string. I don't think these all things would be asked. Yeah, longest substring without repeating characters. This is another important question. Then printing the anagrams. Anagrams you've already covered. Level three, you don't have to go till that much level. Yeah, I think this should be enough. And see, these are the related articles they have given for top 50 array coding problems. I'm going to give this link as well to you all. Right. And I, I think this covers up everything. It covers arrays, strings, mathematical problems. It covers most of the things which you need to know. Yeah, we've already covered that link, yeah. So I think that is it from this particular session. I hope this is very useful to you all because this is going to make you prepared for senior automation engineer coding interview rounds. And believe me, this is more than enough because we've covered up all the areas and this is all what they would expect you to be able to crack it. Wish you all all the best for the interview and please do like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.